Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to this video tutorial on quantizing MIDI note events in Logic Pro 9. This will be the first of a two-part series on quantizing, and we'll be focusing on event-based quantization today. Now, if you're not familiar with what quantization means, uh, nine times out of ten it refers to the rhythmic correction of notes. And you'll find that, yes, you can quantize other things such as velocity or note length or even the pitch of a note, but today we'll be focusing on just the rhythmic correction of notes. What event-based quantize means, uh, what it means is that we are going to quantize notes down in the piano roll editor here, and we can do them as a selection so we can, uh, say, drag over a selection of notes just like so and only quantize those notes. We can also press Command A and we can quantize that selection. Now this is different than what's called region-based quantizing where you select a region and quantize all of the notes within that region to the same value. Um, that we'll be doing in part two. So in order to uh, quantize by the event, you have to open up the Piano Roll Editor. If you don't know how to do that, you can just double click on a, any MIDI region and you'll get this view. And down here I have a piano selection I played in, so let's just uh, play that. Now, uh, since I played this in myself with the MIDI controller, uh, you can see that, you can hear that some of the notes are not particularly locked into place. Uh, you can see all of these, uh, this particular chord here needs to be moved over to where the white line is. And instead of manually moving these and correcting these, uh, what we're going to do is determine what my uh, lowest, smallest rhythmic value is. And it just so happens to be a 16th note. Now I know that it's a 16th note um, by because I set my uh, division down here in the bottom to a 16th note um, and I can zoom in up here and I can see that uh, uh, this chord here is the very short rhythm and it's the fourth 16th note of this particular beat. And you kind of have to think about this just like music notation and it does require a little bit of uh, rhythmic knowledge. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Command A, and that'll select all the notes in my piano roll. I'm going to go up to this menu. This is the Quantize Value menu. It shows us all of the values that we can choose to quantize to. Now, since I said 16th note was my smallest value, I'm going to quantize to the 16th note. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that and watch what happens to my uh, note events in the background there. So now they're all perfectly locked into time. Um, and you'll find that it's actually a little robotic, but it is locked into time, so let's go ahead and play that. Great, so that uh, that's all locked into the grid like it should be. It sounds a little robotic, but we'll go over how to uh, fix that in the second part of this series. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that, Command-Z, and let's take a moment to break down all of the values in the quantization uh, menu here. So below the second off here, there's two offs, there's a little bit of redundancy. Um, we have... Uh, uh, one, 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 two, one, three, and so forth. Now, one, one is the whole note. Uh, one two is the half note, one four is a quarter, eighth note, sixteenth, thirty second, and sixty fourth note. So all of the normal uh, rhythmic deviations or rhythmic durations that we would uh, normally have. But there are some other ones in between here. Uh, the one third note is referring to a half note triplet. So if you're not familiar with what a triplet is, it's a rhythmic value that fits uh, three notes equally into the space of two. So what we have here, uh, if we chose one three, uh, we'd be fitting three half notes in the space of uh, what would normally be two half notes. So each half note would be uh, played a little bit shorter than it normally would. So we have quarter, quarter note triplets, eighth, eighth note triplets, sixteenth and sixteenth note triplets, and so forth. Now, any groove or any rhythm that's a triplet feel as opposed to a straight feel is going to have more of kind of a rolling feeling to it. So uh, feel free to play in straight rhythms and quantize them with a triplet value. You may find that you come up with a more interesting uh, rhythm. 
uh, but you may find it also doesn't work at all. Now, the most important thing I said was that you need to quantize to the shortest rhythmic value, the 16th note here. Uh, so let's see what happens when we quantize to a value that's longer than the 16th note. Now, remember that we, uh, we're supposed to uh, lock up this particular chord to the white bar there, up to the playhead, as a 16th note. Well, what happens when we choose a value that's larger or longer than a 16th note? Let's choose an 8th note. And you can see that it didn't lock up to the grid correctly. This note uh, locked up to the next quarter note. This one locked up to the uh, first eighth note division of the first quarter note instead of that one. Uh, and it was intended to go here originally. Uh, so again, our groove is going to be off. So here's uh, what this sounds like. Now, the uh, longer notes, the eighth notes and the quarter notes, they lock up fine, but it's just those quick sixteenth notes that uh, don't make any sense and they don't lock up to the grid correctly. So I'm just going to go ahead and undo, and I'm going to show you some of these other values up here. Um, we have these three up here, 8, 12, 16, 12, and uh, 16, 24. These are what are referred to as mixed quantization values. They refer to two different rhythmic values at the same time. So 8 and 12 is 8th notes and 8th note triplets. 16 and 12 is 16th notes and 8th note triplets. 16, 24 is 16th notes and 16th note triplets. Now we also have this 1, 1 92nd note up here. This really belongs down here at the bottom. It's the fastest standard rhythmic quantization of or somewhere, whatever reason they put it up at the top of these other values. Now we also have these complex values, 9 tuplet, 7 tuplet, uh, 5 tuplets. The 9 tuplet refers to a rhythmic value uh, where you have 9 eighth notes equally spaced over uh, one measure of 4-4 four, four time. Uh, in 4-4 four, four time, you, have, you can have a maximum of 4 quarter notes or 8 eighth notes per measure. So by doing this, what we're doing is we're forcing 9 notes into the space of 8 to create a very complex and irregular value. Now we also have a 7 tuplet, which is the exact opposite. Instead of adding an eighth note, we remove an eighth note, and we're spacing 7 eighth notes over the space of 8 eighth notes. Now we also have these 5 tuplet values, 5 tuplet 8 and 5 tuplet 4. A 5 tuplet 8th note, or a 5 tuplet 8th quantization, means that we are forcing 5 8th notes to fit in the space of what normally would be 4 8th notes. Again, to create a more complex uh, rhythm. Now, 5 tuplet 4 means that we are squeezing 5 quarter notes into the space of 4 quarter notes. Again, in 4-4 four, four time, you can only have 4 quarter notes per measure, naturally. So with the 5 tuplet 4 quantization, we're squeezing 5 quarter notes into one measure. Now the last uh, set of values I want to show you are these uh, 16A through F and 8A through F swing values. And what these do is these quantize to swing values as opposed to what are called straight 8th note or straight 16th note values. Um, for these, I have a completely different... Um, musical idea here. Uh, I've up here in my range area. I have this uh, standard C major scale on the piano in straight eighths. Now, like with everything else, it's not perfectly locked into time, uh, but it's pretty close. Uh, and again, these are straight eighth notes. So we, what we can do with this is we can uh, select them all, and we're going to go up and we're going to select 8A Swing. Now what 8A Swing does is it's basically uh, just like the 8th note uh, quantization, just like 16A is just going to be just like the 16th note quantization. Um, so those are going to look just like an 8th note quantization. It's just redundancy. I don't know why they put it. But as we go up the list, B through F, you're going to find that it's going to pull the second 8th note away from each first 8th note. So with an 8B swing, you're going to find that, again, you can see there that the uh, second note has been pulled a little bit further from the first note. 
And then we can do this with HC, pulls it a little bit further away. D pulls it a little bit further away. And then E, even a little further away. Now, 8E is special. This is what I call a perfect 66% swing. Uh, this is the type of uh, triplet type swing that you're going to hear in most uh, jazz and swing tunes. So here's what this sounds like. We can also do this with 8F, which is going to pull the second eighth note a little further away. Now, you're probably asking yourself, why do we have all these different types of swing? Well, in jazz and in swing music, when a performer has a faster passage, a faster melody, they tend to perform it with less swing, so the two notes are closer together. When you have a real slow song, you tend to emphasize the swing even more, a real hard swing, say something like 8F. Um, to be honest with you, I've never really used 8A, B, or C, but I have used D, E, and F in professional productions. Uh, and the same goes for the 16th note values. If you have a two straight 16ths, you can swing it that way as well. Now, there's a, a few different ways we can actually quantize uh, let me undo here a couple times so I can get back to my original. Um, the first way I showed you is to select all and then choose a quantize value from the menu here. Um, we can do this a couple other ways. We can actually, if we already have a value chosen, we can uh, either select all or we can select just a range of notes. Maybe we just want to quantize these seven notes here and then hit the Q button it'll just quantize the notes that we select. Uh, in addition, we can also do this by dragging over a, over a series of notes, or all of them, and just hitting the Q button uh, on your computer keyboard. It does the same thing based on the value you have selected. We can also go down to Functions, Quantize Selected Events, and then our last uh, way we can do this is with the Quantize tool in your menu here. So you choose the Quantize tool. And the cool thing about this is that uh, we can quantize individual notes with the quantize tool based on the value selected in our menu. So you don't have to quantize all of them, just a few of them like I did there. So uh, that's uh, it for event quantizing. Uh, one thing I have to stress is that um, what's most important here is uh, musicianship. If you don't play the passage of music in... Uh, somewhat correctly to begin with, you're not going to get the, uh, a perfect quantizing result. Uh, quantization is not a perfect science. Uh, you'll find that sometimes you won't get what you wanted because maybe when you played it in, you weren't you know close enough on the grid to begin with. So that's one thing you have to think about. So um, keep an eye out for part two. I'll be releasing that shortly. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comments section below. Thank you.